Welcome to our Halloween Happening series, sponsored by Etchall and Judikins. Meow! The cats are howling at the moon with this adorable Halloween lantern. Using the etch mask, flip it over, and on the back there's some great little um, guidelines and squares for you. Go ahead and cut out a bunch of strips. Once you've cut out the strips, I counted four of the little squares and cut down the center of one of them. That gives you the perfect length for the fence post. Once you've done that, trim the tip off to give it the tip of a fence post. You're going to do this 16 times. With a ruler and a craft knife, go ahead and cut approximately an eighth of an inch strips. These strips are what you're going to use to attach around the fence post to bring it all together. Using the pint mason jar, go ahead and take the little fence posts and put them all the way around the outer edge of the jar. You can see I peeled back just the paper backing just a little so it would be easier for me to attach them onto the post and do this all the way around. You should take about 16 of them. I eyeballed it, mm, I'm thinking maybe about, not quite a half an inch in between, you know, just whatever you think looks good to your eye. Now that you get to your last fence post, you're ready to attach the strips around the jar. And you can see that we definitely need those to tie this all in together to look like a fence post. And just pull the stripping back and wrap it around. Just like this and repeat the same method with your second strip about a half an inch from the bottom this gives you your fence post look how great this looks using the etch and cream I poured some into uh, the cap and then very thickly applied the etch cream all the way around the jar this is really important you want it to go on thick almost like peanut butter do it all the way around your jar. And you can always go back if you see anywhere that you don't think it looks thick enough. Once you've gotten all the way around the jar, you're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes. Just set your timer and get going on your next step. There's the timer. Now go ahead and put as much of the etch all cream back into the jar and you can save it for your next project. Once you've done that, go ahead and just rinse it under some cold water. Now that it's all rinsed off and clean, go ahead and start peeling back the fence posts. You might want to take the strips off first, but go ahead and do that. And once it's all done, look at amazing. Looks just like a fence. For our next step, we're going to pour the dip and etch inside the little round bowl. This is a little odd because you think you'd be doing it on the outside, but there's a reason for my madness today. Pour all the dip and etch inside and let that sit for 15 minutes. Timer's up. Pour the dip and etch back into the jar. Rinse out the inside and you're ready to go. Cut a two inch circle from the etching mask and Stick it on to the jar. Now I went ahead, little tip, cut four little um, slices into the circle because you're trying to put a circle on a round sphere and it won't really necessarily lay flat. So by cutting the little edges, that will help the moon stick better. So go ahead and put it on the jar. You can kind of think where the moon might land in the sky there. Okay, and we're just gonna peel it back and you can see how much the little um, cutting into it helps and you don't even see it. Spray paint the jar rim black and let it dry. Once it's dried, go ahead and use some really strong glue. 
all the way around the edge. Now take your sphere, your bowl, and attach it to the top of the rim, carefully making sure that it lands right in the perfect spot. Now I went ahead and put a couple books on top and let it sit overnight so it got really good and dry. Spray paint the top of the bowl, almost an ombre style, heavier at the top, going lighter towards the rim of the jar. Now make sure you do spray paint and cover the whole boon. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and peel back the moon. And now you can see this is why we etched from the inside so it gives you that real mystical look for the top of our lid of our jar. The next step is you're going to spray paint the inside of our pint mason jar. But I mean this is a quick little spray inside really quick just enough to give it a little bit of a foggy spray on the inside of the jar. Now to have our cats howling at the moon, we must have cats. So let's go ahead and stamp this great Judikin stamped cat right onto the jar. I'm using Stays It, which is a permanent ink. And you can see how I'm taking from the edge and rocking to make sure I get the whole stamp covered. I used two different cat stamps to finish up this project. Oh, isn't that cute, that little cat sitting on the fence? When I stamped the cat over the word ball on the jar, it didn't stamp its head. So I had these great little Halloween a pumpkin beads. So I just went ahead and glued one right over the top of the head of the cat. I think it gives it a little extra humor. You do need to let that dry overnight for a little while. Now that our cat is all dry, we're ready to go. Super easy. Got these great little fairy lights, turn them on. Oh, I love these. Look how fun this is. Just pile them into the jar and then pile some up in top of the, the sphere and screw the lid on. Oh my God, this is amazing. Look how cute this is. Oh, I think I've got to make one for all my girlfriends and grandchildren, everybody's grandchildren. Oh, look at the cats howling at the moon. We hope you're enjoying our spooky fun Halloween series. Sign up on our website to receive our newsletter and you're automatically entered to win a prize package full of some of our favorite products. And as we always say, when creativity knocks, open the door.